Good evening, Trent Amigo. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT. And it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 to 9, where we talk sports. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking cycling. But before I introduce my guests for tonight, I just want to say, you know, a special congratulations to the Haitian football team, the first female on the 20 team from the Caribbean to qualify for a World Cup. And I think um, that was really an outstanding achievement. And really and truly, Haiti was one of the teams that I really, you know, enjoyed seeing the, the, them on the field, the way they played. And what was even more astonishing is that a lot of the girls on the Haitian team are just 14 and 15 year olds, and they played wonderful football. So Trent Tobago, take notice. That's all I have to say. Well, viewers, as I said, we're going to be talking cycling, and I have with me uh, two members from the PSL Cycle Club. Uh, we have uh, Trent Tobago, top female uh, rider, Tinil Campbell. Tinil, it's always a pleasure. Hi. Welcome again. And we have the president, manager of PSL, also a UCI certificate second level coach. Mr. Desmond Roberts, and Mr. Roberts is also Tinil's manager. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you all here. Um, let's first of all start with a review of Tinil's performance in 2017. I know there's a lot in store for her. She took a year off of school, so that means major things happening in 2018. But let's talk a bit about, from your perspective as a manager, on her performance in 2017. Well, first I want to um, thank her, her, her coach, um, one of the guys who she believed in a lot, which is um, Elijah Green, mm -hmm. who has been handled now over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and I must say, Elijah was one of the local guys who did a very good job to have team uh, where she is today. Yeah. Um, as of 20, 2017, um, one of the things that I, that I look at on the back of a bit um, in 2017 is the Southern Games. Mm -hmm. When um, Tini had study, studies at the time, she studied at night, and after every race, every event, she was under the scoreboard mm -hmm. studying. And then getting up when the when event called, go out mm -hmm. and race and whatnot. And that struck me. Mm -hmm. um, commitment. Commitment. Mm -hmm. You know, and you don't see much of that. And the only thing I'm sorry about, I did not took a picture. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah. under the scoreboard, mm -hmm. studying, and even come, she went out there and raced, won a, won a race. Mm -hmm. You know, so so I want to say hats off to, to, to you, Tino, that I, I never mentioned that before. <laughs> but, you know, I observed that, you know, so I must let um, the public of Trinidad and Tobago know mm -hmm. that it's not just cycling, mm -hmm. um, her achievement, you know, and, and how she was focused mm -hmm. on both areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, coming back to two, 2017, um, you know, I've been dealing with it since December 2016, and I must say I saw both her and her brother um, some commitment to the sport, mm -hmm. uh, more so with, with, with um, the aggression um, to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, and that gave me the drive to, to, to keep on working mm -hmm. um, with young people like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we don't usually get much young people like that. Um, and not just in Trinidad, but throughout, yeah. you know, with that kind of commitment. Mm -hmm. And that gave me that extra drive to, to, to really move forward with, you know, mm -hmm. with supporting and things like that. Mm -hmm. So from 2016 to present, um, you are totally satisfied as a manager for really having her, you know, in your club and really seeing that as, as a young person that you can work with and she can achieve. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also believe, um, and I was telling the, the, the UCI, the new president, that um, I also believe she could make it to the 2020 Olympics. Um, again, she has to stay focused. If she continue, that, continue on that trend, mm -hmm. stay focused. And train her to be able to look forward to the first female mm -hmm. cyclist to take part in, in, in the Olympic event. But again, she will need support. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and by going to Switzerland um, this year, which got invited by UCI to go to Switzerland to do some road event, mm -hmm. um, that will be will always well for her. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we, ch we choose Switzerland, um, I spoke to the UCI president when he was in Martinique, um, where she won 
the double gold medal. Yeah. Again, you know, I wanted to, to, to just touch on that a bit. It was pretty tough going into going into Martinique. I won't go into any, any details on that, but mm. it was pretty tough going into Martinique. Um, we got in there the night before the race. Um, you know, get some rest. One thing I, I understand um, about Tinil, um when I heard last year she got cramp up, the 2016 she cramp up in the road race. A coach or, 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 or manager must know the, the, the athlete. Yeah. If you don't know your athlete, then, then something is wrong. Mm. Right? And if I go outside to work with an athlete, I go on business mm. where that is concerned. So we got up there, we got up late. Um, one thing I told her on the flight when he was going up, I did that this. She said, Well, me and Mr. Roberts mm. said two wins, mm -hmm. nothing less. Well, my motto, you know, um, our club saying is take no prisoners. Yeah. You know, so two wins, nothing less. Um, I don't think she was fully prepared because it was sort of, sort of back, and, back and front um, situation. Mm -hmm. But we decided, you know, to head out to Martinique, um, make sure you get some water, and I told her, just drink. You know, my aim was to make sure she had enough fluid in her system. She would not cramp up during the race. We had no idea of the, the race course, you know, you know, what the course would have been like and things like that. Um, I just told her, you know, ride smart, mm -hmm. stay high, mm -hmm. you know, stay focused. Uh, I had all confidence she, she would have won um, the boat events, okay. you know, go, going into Martinique. Yeah. And that was a, a great achievement in itself. Um, the time trial, again, we didn't have no times of the seven cyclists who went ahead, uh, ahead of her mm -hmm. with the time trial. So again, we had to focus, get things um, organized. I even called Elijah the morning, which is um, a coach, mm -hmm. you know, telling me, you know, we're we going to do the time trial, you know, um, the next morning to get things organized. So get down there, get prepared, you know, and I'm very focused where things is concerned, you know. Um, I could have, who are wrong me? I don't see them. Well, that's, see the the, that, that's the role of a proper manager. You know, I see the cyclists, mm -hmm. you know, and my focus is make sure you go there and, and, mm -hmm. and do your best. Mm -hmm. So. We went out there, I was in the vehicle following. Um, I had my situation, my eye surgery, mm -hmm. so I could not see clear. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking when to start bawling at her, mm -hmm. yelling at her to tell her, hey, mm -hmm. go for it. You know, so I was just monitoring the situation. Mm -hmm. um, I knew it would have been difficult for, for, for her to hear me mm -hmm. because of the, the, yeah, the helmet. Yeah, yeah. You know, she had run and, and things like that. And the final turn into the sprint to the finish line when she got up and she started to drive. Um, I said, yeah, I think we have it, mm -hmm. you know. So not knowing the times the other cyclists do, did. I have to think in my mind, you know, how she's riding, see how she's riding, see if she's comfortable during the rides, you know, see when she's slowing up and see, hey, I feel she's dropping here. Mm -hmm. you, know, you need to pick it up you know, and things like that. So that was my job, mm -hmm. you know, um, to the NID. It turned out to be very successful, you know, two wins, you know, that we brought back um, two medals to train on today. Today, let me jump over to you. A lot of uh, records broken last year, and a couple of double gold medals. Tell me about your season last year, how it was for you, and let the people know about. We heard part of you in Southern Games on the Discoverboard studying riding. A lot of us sit and we criticize when sportsmen or women don't perform or they don't always be on the top but we don't know the sacrifices that you all have to make. So that is something I want to talk about now. Talk about 2017, what it was like for you, right? What are some of the struggles and the, 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 the pressures on life that you had to undergo in order to be where you are today, looking forward to heading to, to Switzerland? Well, first of all, being a student athlete is extremely difficult you must have balance mm -hmm. in both both aspects so some mornings i'll have to wake up at 4 p.m i mean 4 a.m sorry mm -hmm. to train before i go to school and then okay for so for, for example i have to wake up at 4 to reach to the gym for half five mm -hmm. and then after gym i have school for nine o'clock and school goes from nine to four a.m four p.m sorry from when I reach home from school, I have training again mm. in the evening, and that goes on till 9 p.m. And sometimes that's just how my day repeats for the week. Mm. So it's a lot of dedication, focus. You just have to want it. Because some nights you're just overpacked with schoolwork, but you want to train as well, and you both want to do good in school. Mm -hmm. 
So it took a lot out of me. Sometimes I was mentally frustrated, but with the support from my family, my mom and everybody, they support me and kept pushing me and telling me to stay focused, stay on track, and go, go for my goals and head towards my achieve, achieving my dreams. dreams. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, it's just, it's just to have the balance and the support, and everything will be good. It's, you have to want it as the athlete as well. But I'm sure there are times when you sit and you, you just, your shoulders drop and you, you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> what do you use as a, as a motivating factor to, you know, because we'll all get there sometimes. It, it yeah. doesn't have you to be in sports, sometimes in business when things are going on, mm -hmm. you know, you tend to drop your shoulders. What do you use as a motivating factor to just snap out of it as quickly and get back on that track? Simple. I want to be Olympic champion. I have goals. I have ambitions to do mm -hmm. well and continue creating history for Trinidad and Tobago. I want to be remembered as a legend. So mm -hmm. I always replay that in the back of my head. So yeah, it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. I want this. Is what I want. So mm -hmm. I have to make these sacrifices. I have to be determined. I have to be ambitious, and I just have to do what I have to do. Let's talk. Some, let's reflect on some of your achievements for 2017. Um, me personally, I didn't think I achieved much 2017 because of school. I didn't get to go to a lot of international meets mm -hmm. and train and perform and perform better, mm -hmm. as well as to race against more competitive people. Um, but well, the double goal at Martinique at the mm -hmm. Caribbean Cycling Championships. I was able to defend my title. Thankfully for Mr. Desmond Roberts for, and the PSL Cycling Club for all the support in getting me there. Mm -hmm. um, as well, quali well, with that achievement, I managed to qualify for CAC Road mm -hmm. as well and backtrack into Pan Am Track Championships, although I didn't perform as I wanted to mm -hmm. and manage the medal. I still qualify for CAC um, track as well. Then there was Easter Grand Prix. I did pretty okay in that. Um, I didn't manage to reclaim my title in the Karen, but I'm sure I might get it back this year. Mm -hmm. um, I also pay, placed top 10 in the Tobago Cycling Classic mm -hmm. in Division 2, which was pretty, it was pretty good for me. I came seventh overall among some of the strongest junior cyclists as well as elite. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I believe that is that was it. Oh, sorry. Panam we also went to Panam Road Race in Dominica Republic. Um that didn't go so well either, but it was a good experience in the sense that I could now see how much work I have to put in and the type of training that I will need going forward mm -hmm. as well as the support um to reach the Olympics and further continue to achieve my goals. Mm -hmm. And you you did took part in the elite championships at um, Coover, right? Yeah, that's the elite Pan American Right, Championship. okay. Now, when you look back now, um, what do you think that you need to do right now? Because you, 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 you took part in 2017, you got achievements, but in some of the, the events you didn't do what, as what you wanted to do because of school. Now that you have taken a year off from school, how focused and what plans have you put in place to make sure that 2018 is going to be a successful year for you? Um, well, the invitation from the UCI headquarters came in handy. And I believe no, that, that came in because of what? Your performance? The performance at the mm. oh, yes. Caribbean okay. yeah. um, Road Cycling Championships. Mm. So I was very happy and grateful for that, that six-month invitation. Um, well, I will, when I go there, I will have the, ex, well, I'll be exposed to the levels of racing that is intended, intended to carry me to the next level and to break the barriers that mm -hmm. in Trinidad that here, that we have mm -hmm. when it comes to racing is not as high as in Europe. Yeah. Um, well, at the moment, my training has changed. Um, the workload has increased. Well, the volume. The workload, so yes, has increased. So uh, sometimes I might put in 
like 22 hours a week on the road and yeah it's just a lot more and sometimes it could affect you mentally because I'd Sometimes I have to go on the road by myself, and well, I would also have my DPSL driver with me, following me mm. for protection, because we know how the road yeah, is yeah. on in Trinidad and the Bigo. But yeah, that's just how it is right now. So, how long will this um, Switzerland um, stint will be? How long will um, it be? Is got it for six months, I believe. Six believe. months a year. We start from the. 27th of February and commence on the 25th of June, some, somewhere around there. And you'll be out there with, with any um, with any foreign, uh, any local coaches or managers or everything, or are you totally no. on your own across there? No, I'll just how, be myself. How are you preparing for that? Because remember now, this is your first major, it's, it's, it's not a championship you're going for for over a weekend or so, eh? six months you're going for. How are you or who in the PSL club is preparing you for something like this? Because it's going to be different. Yeah, it'll be different. You're, you're yeah. going to be away from your coach, yeah. your manager, your teammates. You can't forget your, your the environmental friends. factor. Yes. How are you preparing now? Um. So that, that's a double um, set of um, things you have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Right? How are you going to prepare for that? How are you prepared? I think mentally I'm prepared for anything. Is Once you're really dedicated and you just have to adjust so I have to go out there and adjust to the different environments, mm. the different training, and I think I'll be fine. How are you as the manager? What's your responsibility here and your role here? In, because I'm sure that although she goes there for six months, you're going to still be her manager. That's right. Yeah. How is the communication? What, how are you going to be working with, with Tineel? Well, um, I have some, some guys in Europe, um, you know, um, like Nick Stoppler and um, um, those guys will be monitoring situation to me. I okay. already have discussion with them. Right. So Nick Stoppler is the captain of, um, of of my team for the Tobago Second Classic. Okay. And I, I must say, um, PSL Second Club was the only club that won the Tobago Second yeah, Classic we, we, on three we, occasions. We will come to that. We will come to that. We will come to that. I'll so, make sure I give you your props. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So. But, um, so at least she'll be so, meeting people who you already know. Yeah. Is that, is that so? When you go across there? Well, Nick. I don't think I might meet them, but probably meet them, but certain they live places I might so they, see okay, them. Yeah, okay. they live close by. Right. So yeah, I have yeah. about uh, probably three or four cyclists from Europe mm -hmm. who I already spoke to. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they, they could monitor things. Right. And, whatnot, and then she'll have their contact, contact right. information. Right. This whole stint, who will be funding it? How is it going to be worked out? What, what? Well, that is something that we, we're still working on. Um, mm -hmm. And we hope to get um, not just corporate uh, training at the Bigo, but mm -hmm. um, support from throughout. So you need, so right, presently right now what you're saying is that you need corporate training at the Bigo and the cycling supporters to come on board to assist you. Yeah. Because it's six months you're going for. Yeah. Right? The good thing, the good thing about it is um, when you go up to Switzerland, um, everything is paid for by, by UCI. Um, oh, okay. Accommodation, okay. Um, okay. equipment, right. and things so, like that. So, um, so your bicycle mash up again, back one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, but, so, so that's good. Um, traveling from China to there is, is where, where the situation is. Okay. You know, um, and winter clothing, you're not sure about that. Mm -hmm. um, there is a situation where you're going to have a different environment where you have to, mm -hmm. you know, you're not like just wearing a t shirt down here and a yeah, shorts yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, hitting the road. Yeah. You know, one thing I'd asked Neil about, about um, the trainer and she had mentioned, and it's something that I would like the public to know. Um, under uh, Mr. Erin Atwell, where her whole program had been changed, mm -hmm. um, she went out on a ride at, um, one morning, and that ride was five hours? Mm -hmm. Six. Six hours, six hours through your Claro mm -hmm. beach and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I was concerned, because coming through beach, you have miles of lonely road, mm -hmm. forest you're going through. Mm -hmm. And also, she called me when I said, I'll send the driver to meet you, wait at the police station before I hit the beach. Well, there was a miscommunication, and she wrote it by herself. So that in itself tells you about dedication. Mm -hmm. I want to get the job mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you know Bish. Mm -hmm. well, how many people in China know Bish? Yeah, Bish is not a safe place here. Yeah. <laughs> ah, but thank you. We need to take a break, right? Hold yeah. your talk there for a minute. We need to take a break. We'll be right back, we'll be right back after this short break.
no changing your question. What I would say, Steve, I, is this. But, but I, my first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Right. Only by not tell me <laughs> In all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David and I'm your host. Good evening, Trenda Bego. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT. And it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. Welcome to the new season of Football in 101. I am your host, Joshua Demattos. Well, it's time for your weekly football news update. Hello, me, Messi. Unfortunately, nice. uh, kiss, kiss the badge, kiss no. the badge. Oh, oh. What's that? Welcome to this edition of the interview and as you can see I'm not alone on the set. I have Marcus, a Liverpool fan, and I have Shaquille. Welcome back viewers, welcome back on special edition tonight. We're talking to Daniel Tinil Campbell. Remember Tinil is on the verge of going to Switzerland on a major six-month stint. And let me take this opportunity that if there is anyone out there who is willing to invest, you know, in something that is positive for a young person. I mean, we're going to get the numbers of the club and anybody, you know, will want to um, assist, you can give them a call. Yeah. We were talking about dedication, right? And right through the interview so far, we have been hearing about dedication. What I want to find out now is in what way this six months stint is going to assist you. And during the six months, would she be returning to Trinidad to take part in any tournaments? Or she's going to be there for the six months and that is it? No, for, uh, for, the, for the six months. The only time she might return Nationals. might be Nationals right? after June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after sure. June or maybe May because we have mm. an event in May. Once there's a national duty, she, she will come back. Yeah, but um, for Easter Grand Prix and mm. things like that, That's it. you know. Um, my thing is, as, as manager, she needs to focus on the big, the big picture. Mm -hmm. right? I think she's thinking the same, the same too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and returning the train out to go back to Switzerland will be wasting time. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, um, so it's better to go up there, mm -hmm. take the pressure, mm -hmm. build on your endurance, um, take the advantage of the situation now. Yeah. yeah. You're looking at 2020, mm -hmm. that's a goal. So yeah. every year she'll be afforded the six months. Well, I'm not sure if she'll be if she'll be afforded six months um, every year. Every year, right? Um, because you're looking to 19, um, that will be different. But in the letter, it clearly states, mm -hmm. um, based on the performance, yeah. if she get a pro contract with a team up there, she could probably be selected with a, with a pro team. So out of this six months that you're going for, you could end up as a pro, as a pro team. Well, that was one of my um, one of my questions to ask. You know, when we will see you, you know, turning pro or getting a pro contract. If we are to look at now, 2020 is a little way off still, right? So, what are some of the major competitions before 2020 Olympics that you feel that you are looking forward to? Getting involved in? Well, Elite Pan American Track Championships this year have big points at the line, mm -hmm. which will qualify for the World Cups. And mm -hmm. from the World Cups, you get to the World Championships. And do that that is where major points are allocated mm -hmm. to the to qualify for Rio. I mean, Tokyo Olympics. Mm -hmm. So basically, the Olympic win window opens in this year elite pan american track championship so that is a priority event mm -hmm. and well obviously next year with the world um world championships and getting to qualify for the world cups mm -hmm. etc as well as partaking in 
a couple of class one and two events, mm -hmm. UCI events, mm -hmm. to just gain the points um, to maintain the top 24 in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Roberts, I know, I know you're eager to want to tell me about your, your club PSL and the, the achievements and, you know, all the accomplishments that you all have acquired so far. Tell me a bit about your club. Well, TV, how TV. long you all have been in existence and some of the cyclists involved with the club and how much time you win the Tobago Classic and, mm. you know. Well, the club been in existence since 2013. Um, mm. Before that, I was with uh, Gene for about seven to eight years um, mm. at Team Trek. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I decided to, 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 to start, my, start my own club mm -hmm. back 2013. That was mm -hmm. in October. Mm -hmm. So our first um, stint was the, again, the Tobago Classic. It was our, our christening. Mm -hmm. Um, for that thing, together with um, Sir Roger Farrell, mm. who supported me then for two years, 2013-2014. Um, we had some cyclists in from Europe, came down, um, and from France um, for that two years thing. Mm -hmm. Then we change, and um, I'm a very aggressive person. When I go into something, yeah. my motto is to win. Yeah. You know, because in my book, there is no room for second place. Okay. You know, so. Um, 2015, that is when I made some changes, um, contacted Nick Stoppler from, from, from uh, Denmark. Um, my first word to him when I get him on the phone is if you need to come to race with my team, my motto is to win. If you cannot achieve that, forget it. Mm -hmm. You know, Lyman is after. Mm -hmm. Before that, you're coming to race to win. I want the yellow jersey from day one until he final day, mm -hmm. and I want to win the UCI stage. Mm -hmm. So Nick wrote to me, he said, I could work with you. Mm -hmm. I said, good. Um, so he had the responsibility to get some of the European cyclists um, that came down here. One thing I would like to stress on, and that opened my eyes to our elite like cyclists, not just in Trinidad, but the Caribbean. Um, we don't have good elite cyclists in the region. And that's why it's good for Tinil to go up to Europe um, but what would you say is the reason for something like that? I believe one is the, the road condition. It, the, the, we don't have the, the type of road really to that level of training. Mm -hmm. um, that is one. Um, two, I believe some, some cyclists um, commitment to it. Mm -hmm. Because it's long hours. Yeah. It's, um, and then you know the driving history with, with people in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. um, like for instance, Colombia. You have those sort of terrain in Colombia. You have mm -hmm. hill climbs. Um, you go into Maracas to ride the road, the road, the road condition is not good. Um, the safety situation. So there's a lot of factors um, involved in that. But those guys who come up with the Tobago Classic, they are not up in, if you check the rankings, mm -hmm. they're not even in the top 50 or, 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 or top 80. Okay. So what that, what that tells me, mm -hmm. the standard of, of, and they is the one who, you know, within most of the races. So back then you won the four, the for this stage in 2015, we missed the UCI stage by Kim Third. And 2016, I insist that we go for the double. And that's when we hit the double in 2016. Um, we brought in a guy from Holland. He's pretty tall. Um, we won the yellow jersey for the, four, for the four days. Then won the UCI stage. And then last year, we also won a double. We have, I work with some cyclists from Guyana. Um, Remember Crawford and was in the other young boy name? Curtis, uh, Curtis, Curtis, Curtis Gray. Curtis Gray? B. B. Um, I also have a team in Guyana that I assist with uniform. Mm -hmm. they, they are doing very good in Guyana. Okay. Um, Easter Grand Prix um, last year um, and years gone by, we did very we were very successful in Easter Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. I was flying, flying the team colors very high. Um, I myself just take part in the event. Um, road races, we did we did pretty well in the road races, mm -hmm. you know. But once you're not um, showing me that respect or come on the train, I get turned off. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be serious because I invest a lot of my time. Yeah, yeah. you know. I used to get up for um, four in the morning, get prepared to go out and meet cyclists to train with them. Um, if they need assistance, um, I go out to them, you know, to, to to do the work. It's pretty tough. I have a mm -hmm. family to see about, mm -hmm. but the my focus is, hey, if you're serious, I'm all there with you. If you're not serious, I start to back off. You know, and hence the reason why, you know, um, I'm a teenil, um, I killed to a point that I have some other users now coming, up, coming into the club. 
that I'm willing to work with. Mm -hmm. But again, I always say, not serious, but my motto is to win. And if you go out to represent Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. my motto under that belt is to win. There's no room for second place. Mm -hmm. Do you use uh, Tineel and her brother Akil as role models for the younger cyclists? Yeah. They, because it's always good to have in any organization some role model there that the young ones can see. Uh, Tineel, how do you handle that role? Because I'm sure that, um, especially with the young ladies who are coming in, everybody's going to want to be uh, Tineel, right? And, you know, sometimes what I say is that in sports, media sometimes hinder sports in such a way that when you look at television, for instance, when you look at, let's say, football, and you see Messi and all these guys, you see Messi and these guys in their playing days making money, you know, and on top of the world. But they don't ever show you the, from Build the up. ground mm -hmm. come up. So a lot of people look at it and say, it's easy. I want to be a messy. I want to be this one. I want to be that one. But these young ladies in the club, they are there with you to see, right, the work you, you, you put in. How do you handle the young ladies or the, or the young guys? What sort of motivation you, you, you give to them? Well, firstly, I'm the only female cyclist in the club. In the club? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need to do something about that. <laughs> Good. Uh, um, so you, you're one of the boys? Well, <laughs> so many guys say, say that yeah, because yeah, yeah. Um, of how I raced against them mm -hmm. and in training and stuff. Um, basically, I think with the guys, it's simply they don't want a girl to drop them yeah. or beat them in races. So yeah, I think yeah. that is their motivation. Okay. Because even, for example, in Tobago Classic, um, the same guy and his guy, Curtis Day, mm. um, I beat him in a race mm -hmm. and he couldn't stop thinking about it. He was like, um, you may motivate me to go home, go back to Guyana and train harder because I don't like how you beat me. You're a girl. Mm -hmm. I'm a guy. I'm a guy. Mm -hmm. That's not supposed to be like that. So I think it's simply just that it's a mental aspect with me when it comes to them. Okay. So, yeah. But I'm sure that when you go to events, you know, there are other young ladies from, from, from other clubs, you know, do they come to you, you know? Um, well, not really. I wouldn't say they come to me, but they just be like, wow, you're so, you're very strong. Mm -hmm. And so, well, after a couple of races, some of them be very waxed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just. Cycling is a very expensive sport. <laughs> very expensive <laughs> sport. And they, I'm sure that. There are a lot of young boys and girls who want to come into the sport, but financially it's a bit challenging for them. Do you see in the near future any organization or structure that can be put in place to assist someone who wants to come in into the sport? How do you see that? If you can't buy the bike, you can't come in the sport. Yeah. So there's no other means that a club that you can come in and say the club have bikes that, you know, have any of these cycle clubs ever look at it that way where they can invest in? But I think it's a lot of point. Talk from, from, from on behalf of the, 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 the sports company by extension, the government. Mm -hmm. I know some years gone by um, and I still have some of the bikes in Arima. Okay. Right? Um, they used to need bikes um, for. But there's a club in a uh, club in Arima. There's two guys in Arima who is doing very good with young cyclists, mm -hmm. developing young cyclists. And after maybe five, uh, seven years, they could branch off to, to another club. Yeah. Um, can't remember the two guys. You know, I'll let them mention the name. But they are doing very good with young it's cyclists. Conan, Conan, Conan and um, Mr. Walcott. Mr. Walcott okay. As the two gentlemen, and they are doing a very good job. Um, where that is concerned, mm -hmm. um, and they have the bike store in a container in Arima, mm -hmm. um, where. They take care of the equipment mm -hmm. and have these kids go. Out. Um, when they reach that development season, you know, maybe branch off to the next club where they have to get other bikes. Mm -hmm. um, there's where maybe the parents have to come in and purchase equipment for them. But it, it is not cheap, one. Um, to maintain a bike is, is, an, is another, another question. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think it reached a stage in, in, in I, would, I was people trying to Tobago because I grew up in sports, different, do, different doing different sports throughout my life. Mm -hmm. um, so I can speak for Trinidad and Tobago. I can't speak for other Caribbean countries. But I grew up in a club called PTY, Quick System Youths. Mm -hmm. And this is something I would I think like. you're still operating, you know? You're still operating. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, was a member yeah, of that club. Yeah. Right? Um, and in today's world, too many people are looking for handouts. Right? When I was a member of PTY, um, I was about probably 19, 20. And we used to sell pie at the Savannah. We had a football team, we had a basketball team, we had a cricket team, and we had an athletic section. Once the club ever went to a sponsor in Princess Town, mm -hmm. and the guy told us he only sponsor the jerseys because he wanted the PSL logo on the jerseys. And we said, no, if you cannot buy the full kit, forget it. And we raised funds and purchased our own equipment for football, cricket, basketball, and the athletics. PTY, Prix system. And 95% of the members of that club came out very successful today. And I, I, I'm very proud to, 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 to mention that. And in today's world, it, it's a whole different ballgame because parents also encourage some of the things. That is what, going, what is going on now. Um, when I moved to Mayaro, I tried creating a club in Mayaro called Mayaro Youths. And, and Moko Trinidad had wrote a letter to me to coach a basketball team up there. And they could have scouts coming down so guys could get opportunities to go abroad to studies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the older guys, and that's why I say some of, the, some of the parents and older guys to blame, used to tell the young youths that I'm training men like they want to go in the military. You know, because I'm very serious when it comes to that. You know, and that turned me off, and I disbanded the whole club. You know, so now I'm in the, in the cycle, I'm glad you asked the question. Um, parents need to, 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 to work with the organization to, to support. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. don't expect mm -hmm. the organization to always put everything out. Mm -hmm. The next thing, corporate um, TNT, um, you purchase something, a buy for somebody. You write all that in your books. Yeah. And you can, you can back that from yeah. the government. That's the law. Mm -hmm. You know. But you will go out there, win a medal, and then everybody wants to be on the bandwagon. We need to take a break at that, at that point. We need to take another break. <laughs> because we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> changing your question. What I would say, Steve, I, is this. Well, what I, well, my first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Call it by not some winner. In all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David, and I'm your host. Good evening, Trent Bego. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT. And it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. Welcome to the new season of Football in 101. I am your host, Joshua Demattos. Well, it's time for your weekly football news update. Hello, me, Messi. Fortunately, uh, nice. ki kiss the badge, kiss the badge. Oh, oh. What's that? Welcome to this edition of the interview. And as you can see, I'm not alone on the set. I have Marcus, a Liverpool fan, and I have Shaquille. <laughs> Welcome back viewers, welcome back to Scoreboard here on ACT. Now, before the break, we were talking about the mentality of both parents and children. And we have seen it now in everyday life because even recently here in a lot of the culture, nobody seems to have money. They want the government to do this and to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Tilly Lam saw that when you got into cycling, you didn't have the best bike. Mm. Right? But you, your family, and your coaches and managers, I'm sure you all work together for you all to have what you have now. Mm. And it don't come easy. But I want to spend the last period of the show really appealing to the public at Trent Tobago to assist you. Because really and truly, every day we hear all the negative things about young people. And no one has the solution. Just lip service. But when the young people are doing something not positive, this is where we want corporate trying to be mm -hmm. able to come forward. And you, you made a good point. Business person investing a, a bike for you, they're not going to lose. They're going to get back. So what I want to talk about here now is what are some of the, in what areas and what are some of the things that we need, and when I say we, trying to be going to need to give you, that when you go to Switzerland, you'll be comfortable. I mean, manager, you could come in too because you will know from a, your perspective what is needed. What is needed? Um when Tiril at, 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 at join my club, we had a club meeting. Guy like to have meetings like every once a, once a month, mm -hmm. you know, to, to keep the cyclism informed what's going on, both with the federation and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I bought a bike for her. I know she was probably shocked that night. And I handed it and said, that's yours. Mm -hmm. so that, that is not club equipment, that is yours. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I saw the potential, the potential Tiril since maybe since she's cycling, go I race against her. I remember reminding her in a race that... She beat you too? <laughs> no, I was sprinter. Oh. <laughs> that was in my younger days. You know, oh, that was, no, not, not, no, not again. Not that, all right, okay. All right. <laughs> but anyway, um, but people need to stop with the lip service and come out and support. Don't wait for the cyclists or the, or the, or the athletes who's whosoever he or she may be. Mm. Once you see that potential mm -hmm. and you hear that this person is doing doing good and, and working hard, you need to come out and probably give that, that support somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. Right? You're not you're not you're not gonna lose. Exactly. Don't wait until the cyclists reach I wouldn't even see I wouldn't say World, World Cup because they will not recognize that but Olympics. Yeah. But there's a big Think about it. Mm -hmm. And then want to put a thing on the papers, you're, fi you're spending fifty and twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Which, other, which could have gone uh, to the athlete uh, yeah, Which could have gone yeah. to assist the cyclists, mm -hmm. funding the cyclists. Mm -hmm. You have nu nutrition to see about. Um mm -hmm. you have to go by the masseuse every every month. Mm -hmm. All these things are cost. Right? And we need or the or the sports person need those assistance. Mm -hmm. Right? When you can't make it. And this is the thing that we are lacking in training at. Look at a simple thing I, I, I look at um, with the Panama League Championship. You have teams came down here like Mexico, Canada, uh, US, all those other teams. Mm -hmm. And they came down here fully equipped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? They even have a guy shooting videos of every cyclist. Yeah. Yeah. So when they go back to the joint board, mm -hmm. they start to analyze. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. You know, I said, I'll so this, okay, she, yeah, she right, go, she beat this one. But are you going to analyze any more of the cyclists? You know, so we need that support before, you know, the, the cyclists go out there and, and think. And if you're not seeing well, the cyclist show any potential, potential, but then you pull up on the manager. Mm -hmm. right? Because it's my responsibility to make sure that that cyclist continue doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Or that sports, sports person continue doing what they're doing mm -hmm. to achieve their goal. You know, plain and simple. Because mm -hmm. I do a lot of investment where that is concerned. Mm -hmm. and corporate and team need to come out and start doing, doing investment for the cyclists. Mm -hmm. They will doing they will invest in what you call our local thing now. People will pump money into it. You know, because they want the mileage. Nice. But the other part, look at that also. You know, this young lady is putting out her sweat and tears every day. Plus she has put her education on hold for a year. Right. Yeah. And it's hours mm -hmm. on the road. Right, I started to send a driver sometimes um, to make sure 
that she's safe mm -hmm. on the nation road, both from vehicles or people, um, you yeah. know, you know the crime situation. Yeah. You know, that's a cost. You know, so I'd rather do that than to get a phone call and say, okay, Tim, you're not coming home yet, and then everybody knows how to panic. Mm -hmm. now it's, then the citizens know how to panic. Yeah. But then they realize, well, hey, yeah. she just want to think in... in, in and in, the in, first thing they will say is the manager of responsibility. He should have done this, he should have done Yeah. That's right. You know, so I'm, I'm not going on that road. Mm -hmm. You know, so once people recognize what, what is happening and give the support, they'll help a lot of young people, quote unquote, to see that, hey, they're getting some support somewhere, mm -hmm. and they could probably, he or she could probably start doing the right things. Mm -hmm. If, um, if, if, there's anyone out there who needs to assist in any way possible. How do they get in contact with the club, or who do they call? Or, or, or? Okay, they could contact the club at. Um, they could call my office, mm -hmm. um, which is six six three two nine seven five, and my cell number is six eight two seven two three two. And you have an administration person in the club, you know, which is uh, Deandra, Deandra Daniel. Mm -hmm. She will um, take the calls because I just be always in meetings, you know, um, things and whatnot. So she will take the calls. Mm -hmm. um, I think have, you should give an email. What's the, what's the Andrea email again? I'm, not sure, I'm not sure about her email. We're going to put it up yeah. after the... Um, yeah. Yeah, after the, after, after the we, right. we discuss, yeah. So DeAndre is assisting, you know, with the event that you have coming up in May, mm -hmm. um, 25th, 26th, and 27th. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we call Fire on Wheels. Yeah. You know, so that's you got in a, May. Yeah, right. that's in May. So you got a UCI sanction, mm -hmm. a class two event. Where even, where, where is Vancouver. it? In Coover. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, in this challenging time, you know, how difficult it is for you to, you said you are, basically a sponsor to Tineal and to the club too. Um, in this time we hear everybody complaining, lack of money, no money, no money. How, how, how have you been able to withstood you know, that and continue that support? Uh, I must say it's very challenging. Yeah? Um, and, <clears throat> and that's what I mean, I'm telling you, I'd rather the club say small now than to have a how large is club. club. How large is the club? Well, before we had something like 13 members. Team. Yeah, now we're down to uh, about eight to ten. Okay. Yeah, and you know, I prefer keep it keep it that way. Okay. Um, you know, just for uh, managing the club uh, properly. Yeah, um, and to make sure the right, financial, then, you know, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, like I have something like sixteen bikes outside that I purchase and you know guys use or things that and whatnot. Then you have you have to buy tires. You have mm -hmm. to get things organized and whatnot. So it's a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And when I check the investment on that, it's huge. Mm -hmm. 16 bikes. You know, I, I remember a guy told me recently, he said, there's no issue me doing that. I said, why? I said, I know where I come from. You know, and based on where I come from, if I see somebody need help, I will help them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to, not because I'm in this position, I'm not going to look down at anybody. You know, um, that's, my, that's my rule. You know, and to the end of the day, Maybe I might get the rewards for it, yes or no. But at the end of the day, I, I feel good in my heart mm -hmm. that I helped somebody. Okay. Um, so, yes, I know it's, it's, it's a tough situation now with the, with the economy. Um, considering my business also, it's very tough to, 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 to do things. And sometimes that gets me a, a bit upset if I see people don't do things that I require yeah. them to do. Yeah. You know, but other than that, um, so far it's, it's, it's going pretty good and I'm managing it. I'm uh, very... What's your relationship with Tini? Do, do you have to, like, buff up at times? <laughs> or she's uh, one of to those rare um, species that to don't, date, don't, give any don't give, give any trouble? To date, I never, never did the cost. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. to date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tini, where, where she go offline, I will... Um, yeah. Just stretching. <laughs> um, I'm sure that um, there are a lot of people who have assisted you or uh, paved the way for you in your career as a cyclist. Who, have, who are some of those people that you would really like to take this opportunity to really say a special thank you to? Definitely my coach Elijah Green. How long have you been with Elijah? He's actually the one who got me back on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did a good yeah. job. 
<laughs> he actually literally begged me to come back out and he What you had stopped cycling? Yeah. And stop. What was he Um I had a couple knee problems. Okay, okay. So I'd start, I took a year and a couple months off and then he when he used to drop my brother home he used to beg me to come back. Mm-hmm. He was like he needs a female cyclist. He needs me back on my bike. Mm-hmm. And here I am today accomplishing a lot under him and will further accomplish more. Mm-hmm. So Elijah Green is definitely number one. Um, there's also Mr. Desmond Roberts because actually since I've come to PSL Cycling Club, um, apart from the upcome where you'll be disappointed in a lot of things, he has actually took the initiative to get me to certain places mm-hmm. and despite all the naysayers and what they have to say, he, be- he believes in his athletes and once you have to go somewhere, he will try it in the best way possible to get mm-hmm. you there. There's also my gym coach, Mr. Junior and his wife, Miss Karen. There's my family, the Huggins, entire Huggins family. They're always there at my races. Mm-hmm. I know that you know you oh gosh, yeah, yeah. For real. Yeah. But I always have fun. Yeah. Yeah, there's and then there's the supporters from day one. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, it's it's just everyone who's who have started with me from the bottom and the ones who are now joining and seeing my potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just very thankful and I'm very thankful as well to the man above for helping me realise that I am talented and cycling is one of the sports that I can see myself succeeding in and acquiring my goals. Because I'm pretty sure that if anyone lay eyes on me, they will never think that I'm a cyclist. They will yeah, always true. think yeah, yeah. I'm probably a volleyball player or a basketball yeah. player. So, yeah. Um, looking back at your career thus far, what um, would you say, is there anything that you have done that you Given the opportunity, you'll do it differently. Or any disappointed moments that, you know, still haunt you to this day? Yeah. Um, Junior Pan Ams. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Track championships in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Where I almost actually won a medal in the Omnium event. Mm -hmm. It was actually my second year back into the sport. And I ended up fourth. (laughs) What was the reason for that? the points race, mm. um, not having much experience, not racing internationally. That was actually my first international event. So mm. yeah, it was just it really hurt. I was like four, I was going into the last event, I was sitting in second position. Mm-hmm. And after the last event, I ended up in fourth. But I'm sure that you learned from that and that is not going to happen again. I'm sorry, but before we wrap, anything you would like to share with us, you know? Well, I would like to thank my wife who who's been very patient with me. You know, getting up early in the morning and hitting the road. Mm-hmm. You know, um You better make sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I have a uh, uh, eighteen months old baby then also. You know, uh, uh, the family time, you mm-hmm. know, I kinda yeah. mix it. It's a different ball game now. Mm-hmm. You know, um to to re- to really have that mix, mm-hmm. you know, with, 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 with my family. Um also I'd like to thank Mr. Walcott, who is um the person who does Take care of um, the massage and so on. Yeah, yeah. do a very good job mm-hmm. where that is concerned. Um, to me, he's one, one of the best. You could ask OG and Samuel that. Yeah. Yeah. Other um, than that, um, the support that that Team Hill family give her is, is, is excellent. You know, her, her mom is there with her, you know, neck and neck. Mm-hmm. You, know, um, you know, I met um, a dad. He's also very supportive, you know, you know and things like that. So that is, that is excellent. Okay. When I see those things, that, that gives me that extra, that extra drive. Okay. You know, so, in closing, I'd like to say, um, I want to thank her for flying the PSL club high. And also, um, and she goes to the race, um, very aggressive and focused, and do what she has to do. And okay. also, that double gold medal she achieved for training and the vehicle was, was you know, very successful. Okay. So, I you know, also want to thank her for that. Okay. And you leave on what day? What day? The either the 26th or 27th of February. February. Well, Tinil, on behalf of myself and ACTA, we want to wish you all the best. We want to wish you a successful six-month stint. And 
we wish that after the first six months, you get another six months. But we're really hoping that Trent and Tobago will come out and support you financially or any other way possible. And we look forward to greater things from you. And we know that you're going to come back a better cyclist. Of course. Right? So again, Mr. Roberts, a pleasure. See me. Right? Mm -hmm. Tenille, all the best. Thank you. And um, we're going to keep in touch and we're going to make sure that we support you in some way, any way possible. Right? And we know you're going to do well. Really? And we're going to look forward to seeing some more females in your club. <laughs> That's right. right. Because we're going to want somebody else to follow in her footstep. Good. Right? Let, let them know I'm a Juman eh, because when I, say, when I say 66. It's 66. <laughs> well, viewers, we have come to the end of an edition of Scoreboard here on ACTN. We were talking to the Trent Tobago female uh, cyclist, Tinil Campbell, and her manager, Desmond Roberts. And Tinil leaves at the end of February to head to Switzerland on a six months um, training stint. That is going to benefit her. And as I said before, our viewers, if anybody out there and you want to assist, please, the number is going to be on the screen, the email, all the information. Please help her. And remember, you're not going to lose because you're going to claim back tax. So don't say you don't have any money. We know things are tough, but invest in something that is worthy. If you miss any part of this show, tomorrow at 1 p.m., it's a review. And uh, catch us next week, one Tuesday at 8 p.m., right here on this channel. Have a blessed week ahead.